So let's have a look at this problem. So new windows at Nottawasaga Fabricating are expected to save $400 per year in energy over their 30 year life. The windows have an initial cost of $8,000 and will have zero salvage value. Okay, so at the end of 30 years, you take the windows out and you just take them to the junkyard. Okay, there's no salvage value. Part A of the problem says use a spreadsheet to plot the present worth of this investment as a function of the interest rate. You might think, well, I, we've never done that before. What, is, what does that even mean? We'll get to it. Okay, and then part B is use a spreadsheet to calculate the IRR. So I, I wanna do this for you, but I, first I want you to think about this problem and just make sure that you have the cash flow diagram in your mind. I'll just do a quick sketch down here. So what is the $8,000? Right, what would that what would the eight thousand dollars be on the cash flow diagram? Yeah, first cost. Someone says FC. Good. So that's going to be a down arrow of negative. I'll just put eight K, and then the four hundred dollars savings is an annuity. Okay, and it, so for thirty years, I'll I'll draw thirty years on here. All right. So this is um, this is thirty years. So if, I hope everyone counted all of those. Those are the years. Okay. And then ev at every year we have an up arrow. I won't draw all of them. Here we have an, a positive annuity, we call it an A, of $400. This type of cash flow diagram, where we have a first cost, and then after the first cost, all positive returns. In finance, they call that a simple investment. And the reason it's called a simple investment in fact, relates to the roots of the equation. So when you solve the time value of money equation, you get a single root, a single one single value of IRR, and that's why we call these simple. So, so we know right away by looking at this cash flow diagram that you know this is a this is a straightforward problem for rate of return analysis. I might even just switch over into a spreadsheet. Okay, so I'll switch over. Okay, so the into in Excel, and what I wanted to show was how Excel actually has kind of a, a built-in knowledge of cash flow diagrams. So, so if you look over here, I've got time, right? And this really could be like time period in, in this column. And it goes from time t equal to zero, right? That's just like our cash flow diagram, time t equal to zero. And we have a cash flow of negative 8,000, maybe that's a little bit small. I'll zoom in a little bit there. Okay, so, so here we can see at time t equal to zero, we have a, uh, a negative 8,000. And then for every other time, we have a positive 400. Well, all, all this is, and this, this goes down to, um, it goes down to 30. This spreadsheet has essentially all 30 years shown, but just as a column of numbers. And you don't even need the, the time column. The built-in features that I'll show you in Excel actually assume that all of these cash flows are occurring at equally spaced time intervals. And it doesn't care if they're days or years or months or whatever. It's up to you to know if they're days or years or months. For us, their years, which means when we calculate an IRR, we can interpret that as a yearly amount. If these were months, then the built-in IRR would give us a monthly IRR. Okay, but um, but anyway, what what we're, I'm doing here is basically just showing that you can put a cash flow diagram into Excel. The next thing I want to point out is over here. Maybe you can see it a little better if I do that. So NPV. NPV is another finance term that means something exactly the same as what we've been calling present worth. You know, if you talk to a, someone in, in business, so they might say present worth, they might say, is that like NPV? And you would say, yeah, it, it's exactly like NPV. So you could, you could put up here equals present worth, okay? NPV equals present worth. And the reason I put NPV here is because of what is inside these cells. So in this cell, I'll show you what I what I actually typed in. NPV, which is a built-in 
Excel command, NPV, and then it's asked me for the rate, uh, and then I can put in the range. And all I have to do is highlight the entire range of numbers. That is the formula that is in all of these cells. So for all of, for these interest rates, the corresponding present value at this interest rate is this number. So at a 0% interest rate, the, there is no modification to the dollar amounts as we go move them through time. And if you take 30 times 400, that's positive 12,000 minus 8,000 gives 4,000. Okay, so, so that's a good way to kind of check that the formula is working properly. What this column is like is really like, I, remember it's like present worth, and then these are the values we're plugging in for I. It would be kind of like saying that these are the MAR. So if I say, okay, we're going to do present worth analysis on this cash flow using 1% as the MAR, this is the number that would come out. And we get a positive value. And remember what that means. If I do a present worth analysis with this as the MAR and I get a positive present worth, that means the project at least earns 1%. Let's say, let's try 2%. Well, 2%, we're still positive. So it still earns more than 2%. Go to 3% and the value of the present worth turns negative. That means that somewhere between 2 and 3% is the true rate of return for this cash flow diagram. And, and honestly, the, the, the built-in NPV function is very useful in Excel. The really good thing is that if you have a series of cash flows that are not an annuity, then you pretty much have to use, use Excel. Because if, if you had 30 years and they were all different numbers and they didn't follow one of our regular time value of money interest factor patterns, you'd blow your brains out trying to calculate the NPV of each of these. I mean, you could program each cell or you could just use the built-in function in Excel. So I can make any of these 400 numbers, any number at all. So someone has actually asked the million dollar question, and that is, do we linearly interpolate between two and three to find the answer? Well, no, we have, there's also a built-in function that looks after us for that. So I'll, go, I'll come right here and I'm gonna type in a new title. I'll call it IRR. I'm going to zoom back in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to type in this cell, I'm going to do IRR, just type IRR, and then it prompts me for the, it says, uh, what are the values? And then, you know, so the values for the IRR are simply the column of numbers. That's it. You know, so, so all I did was I went into the cell, I typed plus sign to indicate, or equal sign, IRR, started a open parentheses, then I grabbed the range of numbers that was the cash flow diagram, the, the, you know, the Excel version of the cash flow diagram, close parentheses, hit enter, and there you go, IRR 2.84. So 2.84 is between two and three, and we don't have to interpolate because we can get the number directly. Now, what's actually happening inside of Excel is a numerical method. Right, so, so to actually have IRR calculated with one command, the programming that underlies Excel is doing some type of root finding method. Now, if I actually go back and answer the question that was in the slides, it said draw a graph of the present worth versus the rate of return. That's this little graph right here. I really only have five points that make up this graph. But here we are at an interest rate of 0%. And remember, at 0%, the present worth was 4,000. And then as we increase our expectation, right, as we increase that MAR or I, whatever you want to call it, our present worth decreases. Remember, because when we bring cash flows from the future back to the present, they get smaller. So it makes sense that the higher the interest rate, the smaller the present worth will become. And at some magical point, the present worth crosses zero. Zero is here, right? So this line is zero. And where it crosses is that 2.84 
which was what the IRR answer was when we looked at it with the formula. That's a, kind of a quick intro to Excel for finding IRR. And I think we did both of these things, right? We did the plot and, uh, and we used the spreadsheet to calculate IRR. Pretty straightforward stuff.